Hello students of class 6. This is social science and today our topic is disaster management and mitigation from chapter 12 page number 89. So today we are going to learn about disasters. So for that first you need to know what is a disaster. So Disaster is a sudden occurring phenomenon causing large-scale destruction. So what you see here in the picture is a destruction, right? And it was caused by a disaster. So disasters can be of different types. It could be na uh, natural disasters or a man-made disasters, okay? So either of these disasters causes a heavy damages to the house, to the area, to people, all right? Also, in many cases, people die during disasters and there is a huge loss, okay? So, a disaster is a sudden occurring phenomenon causing large-scale destruction. So, this disasters happen suddenly, all right? Only in some cases, uh, we get the information before the disasters happen or else most of the time disasters happen suddenly and that is why we are not prepared, right? So here in this lesson, you will learn about the different types of disasters that we have. Some of them occurs naturally, whereas some of them are because of uh, man-made disasters, okay? That is, we are the ones who used to create these disasters. All right, so these are the examples of the natural disasters, okay? So you see the cyclone, you see earthquake, you see fire, you see volcanoes. Now, can you differentiate which of these are man-made and which of these are natural disasters? See, this volcano is a natural disaster, right? Also, we have earthquakes, cyclones, tornadoes, all of these are natural disasters but sometimes this occurs because of humans also okay for example uh, if we leave the fire uh, unattained or if we are careless with the fire this could cause huge damages right some of the fires are caused naturally right like for example the forest fire where it doesn't rain for many weeks and months and the forest becomes dry. Now, these leaves and the branches, which becomes very dry, they catch fire easily. So sometimes it is humans who used to throw fire because of our careless mistakes, or sometimes these leaves and branches, out of extreme dryness, it causes fire naturally, all right? So these are the examples of natural disasters. Now, let's start with landslide okay so here in this picture you see that a large mass of land right a large mass of land had fallen down right and when it happens it causes destruction of homes okay you see that some of the houses has broken right so it has damaged buildings even the trees has fallen down along with the mud right so this landslides it's a natural disaster but also, sometimes it happens because of humans. How? Suppose if we cut too many trees, suppose if we are throwing too many garbages, especially the plastics, then the land, which is strong enough to hold each other, it loosens up, right? And that is why when we have continuous rainfall, these soils become heavy and they lose control and they flow out, all right? So when this happens, it causes damages to homes, also it causes damages to trees, and people also get killed during landslides, all right? So when you watch news, you would also hear that people have died because of the landslides, all right? So whenever landslides are extreme, then it also causes that, or else most of the time, landslides, they causes damages to buildings, and homes and all the things that are in the surrounding all right now next is 
earthquake. So earthquake is a pure natural disaster. It happens naturally. So below our ground, we have some tectonic plates. Okay, these tectonic plates are fixed like that. But sometimes there is movement in these tectonic plates. So whenever there is movement, it causes vibration underground and it causes earthquakes. All right. Now, whenever there is earthquake, it uh, causes damages to the buildings, the houses. And because of the earthquake, the rivers, all right, they cause disturbances. So we can also experience some tsunami or flood-like situations as well, all right. So earthquake, uh, the, the power, the intensity, all right, the intensity of the earthquake is measured in richer scale all right so we have from scale one to nine whenever the intensity of the earthquake is about two we may not feel much but whenever is three or four we feel it whenever the richer scale reaches up to five and above then it causes damages okay we have also come across earthquakes which was seven point richer scale or eight richer scale right and those has caused huge damages to the entire area especially you know these earthquakes they have an epicenter all right there is a certain area where the earthquake starts and it spreads to other areas all right so those areas that were the main areas that were the epicenter of earthquake they causes the major damages okay they experience major damages and deaths okay next is tsunami as i've told you that because of the earthquake it causes disturbances in the sea and it causes tsunami all right so this tsunami what happens the waves of the sea most of the time the waves are quite normal all right but during tsunami the waves can go up to 100 meters and when they are causing such a huge wave they causes heavy damages especially to the people who are living in the coastal areas all right there are countries that are very close to the oceans and the seas right so these areas they have huge danger whenever they faces tsunami because the waves are so high and they are very strong so it used to flush out even the homes and uh, people and the things that are in those areas all right so what you see here is a tsunami okay next is flood whenever we have a uh, continuous rainfall then most areas uh, experiences a flood like situation okay sometimes the floods become very severe so it causes heavy damages and it also uh, washes off the houses and people get drowned people get killed right what you see here in this picture is also a situation is also a flood okay where people have experienced flood however you see here this is not very extreme all right this can be taken control but there are situations where uh, because of the continuous rainfall the water level rises up okay and then it covers up even the houses and um, people are washed away and then many homes are uh, washed away along with the floods all right and one of the worst situation during the flood is that they pollute the drinking water so during those times until and unless the other countries provide some clean drinking water to these areas it becomes very difficult for the people to drink their water okay because it has become purely polluted and contaminated so if they drink this water again it will cause some waterborne diseases right so during floods the food and the water gets polluted and it becomes dirty so people cannot eat the things that they have around so that time they have to seek help from the other countries next is cyclone so here you see the cyclone that is from the satellite okay this is the visual from the satellite that is from very far from the uh, sky okay 
and this is the cyclone. So during cyclone, there is heavy rainfall as well as windy, uh, heavy wind, all right? Very strong wind that blows along with the rainwater. So during those times, because of the uh, very strong intensity of the wind, even the houses are broken down, especially the glasses, right? And then uh, sometimes uh, because of the strong wind, things are blown into the ear, okay? And then during these times, electricity are totally cut off and um, many things, you know, people cannot go out from their homes because they are scared as the strong winds can even blow humans, okay? So there are occurrences where the strong cyclonic weather has blown away humans as well as the things in their homes also, the huge buildings are broken down because of the cyclonic rainfall or the cyclonic kind of situation. Next, you see here is a drought. Okay, what you see here is a soil. All right. So, during drought, what happens? There is no rainfall for continuous weeks and months. So, the soil becomes very hard. All right. So, in order to grow crops, we need a very soft soil known as the fertile soil for that the soil has to come in contact with water all right so humans for us it's not easy to go around the entire field and water them right so we depend on the natural waters that is rainfall but we also have cases where sometimes the rain doesn't come for weeks and even months all right so that time the soil becomes very hard and we cannot plant anything there. In fact, in these soils, whatever have been planted also dries up completely. Okay, so during drought, uh, we do not get food and we do not get water and it causes a problem in the society. Okay, so that's why during drought, they start asking for food and water from other countries and uh, or else they cannot eat anything that is uh, from their soil as the soil becomes very hard and uh, all the crops and the vegetables dry up okay next is forest fire now forest fire there can be either uh, the uh, forest fire may either cause because of uh, the human act all right or forest fire can also cause naturally all right now suppose you know there are times where humans they go for trekking they go for picnics right so while do, going there we used to make fire right so it is very important that we need to put down this fire before leaving the areas all right or else this fire may also be the reason of causing forest fire all right or else sometimes the forest fire causes naturally that is because uh, the uh, forest becomes very dry, the leaves becomes very dry, so there is friction, and because of the slight friction also, there is spark of fire, and that is why the entire forest catches fire, okay? Next is slow, uh, snow and avalanche, all right? Now here, what you see here, this occurs especially in those areas where the mountains are covered with snow and glaciers okay so here the snow they falls down from the mountains and when they're doing that they used to cause heavy damages to those uh, areas also they used to break down um, trees all right so there was recent cases of snow avalanche where they have even uh, broke down a bridge and it killed people okay so these cases could also become very dangerous all right and there are people who are living near the mountain areas right especially in the himalayas in himachal pradesh so for them this becomes very dangerous because they often come across snow avalanche now disaster management and mitigation so whenever a destruction happens whenever a disaster happens so there are two ways okay either we have to be prepared before the disaster or we have to do something after a disaster okay so suppose like earthquakes 
So for earthquakes, what we can do, we can be prepared before time, right? Like for example, we can keep some um, a first aid box like medicines and those uh, medicines that we can use whenever a person get hurt, right? So we can keep some uh, first aid toolbox or also we can keep some torchlight or some uh, clean water in the bottles. Also, we can keep some dry foods that does not that doesn't uh, get rotten up, right? So these are the things that we can do before a disaster. So sometimes, you know, we get the informations beforehand, all right? The we get to we get some alarm and we get some informations from some uh, people saying that we need to be careful. Like for example, a certain earthquake has occurred in one area, all right? Now there is high chance that the next country might also face earthquake. So that time we can be prepared beforehand. Also, we can look around in our house and see if we can go to certain areas to protect ourselves, okay? Because during earthquakes, the buildings will crash down. So we, need, we shouldn't stand near the building or we shouldn't stand near the electrical poles, right? So we need to find a clear space where we can take our families and go there for safety, all right? So these are the things that we can be prepared of. But sometimes when the disasters happen uh, suddenly, then we can't do anything, right? So in that case, we need to think about what we can do to help others or to also help ourselves. So there are people who used to help us during different natural disasters, okay? So they used to come for support. Also, other countries used to bring medicines, food, clothes for us uh, after the disasters, okay? So these people, they, uh, they help us, but we also need to be mentally strong, which we will discuss in the next one, okay? So these are the destructions which are caused. So after the destruction, uh, we need to uh, help one another to clear up or we need to help one another in keeping one another strong, all right? So for disaster management and mitigation, all we can say is either we need to be prepared beforehand by keeping certain things for safety or after the disaster, if something happens, we need to look out for help or we need to uh, look out to help someone, okay? Now here, there are some certain effects of disaster. One is humanitarian, two, public health, three, environmental problems, and four, infrastructural damages. Now starting with the first one, humanitarian. Whenever a destruction occurs, we used to face great loss of land, uh, property, and many things, all right? So during this time, there is also an uh, effect in the public health. So many people get admitted to the hospitals, and because of the sudden uh, disaster, there is also a shock, right? Mental shock. So it takes a lot of time to get through this shock. So, and the other thing that the uh, disaster effect is environmental problems, all right? So during disasters, water gets polluted, land gets polluted, and even the food gets polluted, right? So there is huge loss of food and water, and there is also infrastructural damages. Sometimes the da disasters are so strong that it used to uh, break down the buildings, right? The offices, the schools, and many important buildings. So it also causes infrastructural damages. Now, when we see all these effects of the disaster, what we can learn from this lesson is that we need to be prepared, right? Mentally and emotionally, because anytime a disaster may happen, so we need to be prepared. Also, we need to strengthen ourselves with uh, emotional strength, okay? So thank you, my dear students. We have learned this chapter, and I'm sure you will also be prepared for any natural disasters.